let's talk about problem statement again so problem statement is the backbone of your phd study because without problem statement you cannot go for your phd this is the very very important part of your phd if you are writing your proposal so you must need to have a problem statement a clear problem in your mind so now the 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 thing is how i do find research gap or problem statement research gap and problem statement are the two similar thing as i told in my previous video that when you find some gap gap mean that there is a gap between two things that there is a and that gap need to be filled in order to reach our milestone in order to reach our target so that is research gap because that particular place need attention of the researcher to fill that gap and that is also called a problem statement so if somebody asks that how i do find my research gap and how i do find my problem statement can somebody give me is a gap how uh, i need to um, i use what kind of techniques the simple answer is that read 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 there is no shortcut you will find research gap and problem statement from reading from reading literature there is no simple rule there is no shortcut in this you must need to go and read literature review about that particular field if you are going for sensors if you are going for material science if you are going for uh, some disease if you are going for some uh, catalysis any kind super capacitors if you are going for any nanotechnology advanced chemistry technology you must need to read papers about those particular places now uh, it's clear that to find your research gap or to find problem statement you must need to read 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 this reading will also enhance your writing skill i will also made another video about that that how reading can improve your writing skill and you can write a very good papers now let's go to for example how i'll read uh, these are journals here uh, this is general material chemistry paper and look look this title fatigue resistance a flexible efficient and metal oxide free perovskite solar seal you see and perovskite solar steel they must have metal oxide and these people use metal oxide free so they use it they, they use some alternative so because of reading these kind of papers um, uh, you will understand that uh, what are the research gap so in this case they use metal oxide free so this means that uh to use metal oxide in a perovskite solar seal it increasing the cost so this is a problem little bit you can see that if so you when you minimize the pro the cost so you are solving some problem when you are minimizing cost so you are decreasing problem every perovskite solar seal using every perovskite solar seal using the uh uh, uh, uh metal every perovskite solar seal using uh, a metal based uh, there we must have a metal uh, in that solar cell so that additionally adding the cost to the perovskite solar cell these guys are using metal oxide free they are not using metal oxide so actually they 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 are solving some problem uh, because they are now let's go to another paper and i am not reading uh, abstract you must need to read abstract i'm just reading the title and i can easily understand that uh, what is going on and what is happening this is nature communication paper in nature uh, uh, look at this high efficiency robust perovskite solar cell an ultra thin flexible substrate you see this is another very interesting uh, statement that uh, in perovskite solar cell or in every kind of solar cell we use substrate substrate contribute almost half of the price of the solar cell you see substrate in which you put metal oxide in other material then you put another counter electrode so they use ultra thin flexible they also use flexible so they are solving one problem the rigidity rigid rigid the the, the fto the glass the glass which we are making solar cell it is rigid basically rigid it is hard 
So you cannot put those things on a curved surface, on your bag, on your other curved surfaces. You cannot uh, use as a watch. So you see, it. so they are solving one problem of the rigidity. That means the rigid surface, the rigid substrate is a little bit problematic because if you want a uh, solar seal on the top of your bag, and that solar seal we need flexible because your bag is going up and down. You are keeping your lug luggage, you are keeping your books in your bag. So we need flexible substrate. You see, they are solving, solving one problem. Another is they're using ultra thin. Ultra thin means very, very thin. They are decreasing the thickness of their substrate. So they are also decreasing the cost. They are solving the problem. You see, so how many problems I can find? How many problems I can find? So you can say that using thick substrate is a problem because it added the cost. It increased the cost of the solar seal without reading the abstract and introduction and conclusion. Let's go to this another paper. What they are doing basically, they are doing silver nanowires, top electrode and flexible ferroscat solar seal using titanium metal as a substrate. Instead of ferroscat, instead of FTO or titanium ITO, they are basically using uh, um, titanium metal. You see, so basically they are using titanium metal and most of the cases people using uh, uh, ITO or uh, FTO, uh, these are very, ex you see, so far ITO is the most commonly used transparent counter electron material. I told you, ITU, people using ITU, so they are using, you see, although excellent performance was achieved on flexible titanium substrate. Flexible titanium is flexibility is there titanium. ITU is undesirable for large area and low cost fabrication necessary for commercialization because of indium is a scarce and also the material require expensive and limited continued roll to roll pressing under vacuum. You see, nicely we, we find the problem statement here. For example, the problem statement here is very clearly this guy said that why we use. Uh, titanium substrate if you look into good title they use titanium titanium substrate here they use titanium substrate titanium substrate is flexible and if you go and see this paragraph they say although here they say so far until now ITO is the most commonly used transparent counter electrode material therefore a high efficient flexible ferroscat solar seal and a titanium substrate was developed considering the remarkable property of the material. Look, although excellent performance was achieved on a flexible titanium substrate, ITO is an undesirable problem for the large surface area, for the large area in low cost fabrication because ITO is very expensive. Necessary for commercialization because indium is a scarce. The first problem is indium is available in limited quantity, scarce. The major, uh, the, 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 the waste product is not here. And also the material require expensive and limited continued roll tool processing under become. And to process INTO, we need uh, expensive and limited uh, roll to roll processing under vacuum. We need to create vacuum. So this means this is very complicated. So he said that for these reasons, the replacement with solution processable transparent counter road alternative is highly desirable. You see, they give suggestion for that problem. I hope you understand how to find research gap and problem statement using literature review. Read, read, read. If you have any problem, do not hesitate to put your comment below and ask for suggestion and comments. Thanks for watching.